Uh, good question, Lady Tossington. Um, I'm really loving writing the Vampirates books, and I've got lots more ideas um, for the Vampirates characters. And I'm aware that I've only got one more book after Empire of Night to, to get those ideas in, unless I start coming up with ideas for some more. Um, I do have a couple of ideas for non vampires books, um, which I hope to get around to writing. In a way, while I've been writing the Vampirates books and, and bringing out one roughly every year, it's been quite hard to get another project up and running. Um, so once I've done the, uh, the sixth Vampirates novel, I might have a bit more time to do that. Um, and the other two ideas are very, very different. So hopefully they'll, uh, they'll surprise you a little bit. Well, I'll tell you who the new character is. Um, his name is Obsidian Dark, and he comes into the story uh, in the vampire sphere. Um, and he's quite a mysterious and forbidding character. And I think that's all I'm going to tell you about him for the moment. Uh, Monica and Kaylee wanted to know about Lorcan and his crossing story. Um, yes, you will find out about that. Probably not in one of the main novels, I think, um, but probably in this book, which is roughly titled Crossing Stories. It might have a different title uh, when it comes to pu being published. And that book I'll be working on once I finish the, the sixth uh, novel in the sequence. So um, I haven't entirely, to be honest with you, I haven't entirely worked out what Lorcan's Crossing story is. But I have some ideas, um, and uh, some ideas about who that story might relate to. But it's definitely a story that I want to find out about and uh, to share with readers, so I will definitely do that, yes. There's definitely going to be one more book after that, which will be the book that's, that's titled Crossing Stories, although that title might change. But the idea is to explore uh, some of the background stories behind some of your favourite and my favourite vampires characters. Now, I'd love to take the series on beyond that book. Um, I have, the funny thing is that I've really got more ideas about uh, vampires and the characters and the world of the story now than I had at the beginning of writing the sequence. Um, so I may look at a way to take these characters forward um, even after that Crossing Stories book. I'd love to see Vampires made into manga, Nancy. Um, I mean, obviously, since Kev Walker started doing the cover designs, um, I think that the illustrations have got a, a, a bit of a nod in the manga direction because Kev is so uh, big into graphic novels. Um, and into um, a graphic magazines. So I think that the characters look quite uh, mangry already. Um, I love the Japanese editions of my books. This is um, the first part of Blood Captain. So you can see it's Trophy's golden hand with the red fingernails, the ruby fingernails, um, which also looks quite mangrish to me. So um, I think in a way there's a lot of elements there. Um, and certainly that's, that would be a very exciting way to see the books rendered from my point of view. Um, Grace and Girl Power. Um, I'm really glad that you're enjoying the, uh, the strong female characters in the books. That was always one of my intentions with the stories, that there would be really strong female characters um, on both sides of the story. So with characters like Cheng Li, um, Jasmine, Bo Yin um, on the pirating side of the story and then on the vampire side of the story um, obviously Darcy um, and then Lola a very strong character and there's a lot of strong new female characters um, in the new book Empire of Night um, and with Grace yes I think you will see a different side of Grace in Empire of Night um, she's definitely um, a bit more active, I would say. So she's always going to be cerebral and um, uh, she's obviously got quite developed psychic powers, but you're going to see uh, a bit more of an active and a bit more of a proactive Grace in this story, and I think she's getting all the more intriguing and exciting a character for that. Um, Lorcan 
I usually write my books right here, Tia. This is where it all happened. Um, I'm writing on a laptop, so I can be mobile, um, but I like to work now on this big screen. I find it much more comfortable. Um, so yeah, this is where it all happens. I don't know if you can hear kids screaming in the background. There's a girls' school just up the road. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the office. <laughs> is there going to be a showdown between Lorcan and Johnny in Emperor of Night? Yes, there is. Um, Johnny's back in this book in a very big way. Um, he's always been one of my favourite characters. Um, now, I know uh, on my blog recently, um, there's been a lot of talk amongst Nocturnals, a lot of anti-Johnny talk, I think, and a lot of pro Lorcan. Now, I'm quite happy to have pro Lorcan talk, but I think you all need to give Johnny a bit of a second chance. Um, Grace is going to give Johnny a second chance in this book and um, things are going to get quite interesting between the two of them and then latterly between the three of those characters. But you're going to see a very different Lorcan in this book as well. Um, Lorcan is um, rather more dynamic in this book. He's going to be uh, developing his sword fighting skills for one thing. So everyone's changing and developing a little bit. <laughs> uh, the books are available as e-books, uh, e uh, Relic. In fact, um, for one month only in the run-up to publication of Empire of Night, you can download a free e-book of Demons of the Ocean um, by coming along uh, to the website, fanpirates.co.uk. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, but they're all going to be available as e-books, um, and I would love them to be available on the iPad and I would love to have an iPad. So, um, you know, I think that's very important to keep up with all those new ways of reading um, and uh, new ways to reach readers, definitely. Oh, Elwood, good question. Um, there is definitely a bit of a tension. I mean, there are, there are kind of two triangles um, in the story at the moment, aren't there? There's Grace, Johnny and Lorcan. But there's also Jasmine, Jacoby, and Connor, um, and um, there's, there's definitely a bit of a secret now that Connor and Jasmine are holding on to. Um, again, I don't want to um, spoil the story of Empire of Night for you, for you, so I'm not going to say whether Jasmine comes clean, but I think it's fair to say there's quite a lot of tension and unresolved issues uh, between those three characters, and it may not all be resolved in this book. Cool.